the you know the programmer or the user or in basically your your application that you know something didn't go right so we'll say magic method let's say didn't doesn't support that prefix So this way, you know how we started initially and we had this call and it just it didn't return any errors? And that's actually a bit of a problem because then we don't know if, uh, if something is actually going wrong. So by throwing a new exception, we make sure that we can still check to see if somebody is actually you know, using the right method prefix. So if I do XYZ address, I should get require once, error, and it's going to throw an error. Well, now it's saying it can't find an exception. Oh, yes. Let me just go back here for a second. We, again, because we're dealing with something that has namespaces, we have to specify that this is the absolute namespace, the global namespace. There we go. So now we're going to get uncaught exception. Magic method doesn't support that prefix. So this is a great way of making sure that your code is robust enough that it can handle um, you know some of these odd cases so now if I do get address that should still be okay but of course of course set address doesn't exist we need to define that now now I'm gonna take this return statement and just put it where the get clause is we're gonna make this a little more robust in a second but let's just get set working as well so in the set case, we have to actually deal with these arguments. So you'll notice that the call function has two parameters. It has a name variable and it has an args variable. And the args variable is basically any arguments that you would pass into the call parameter. So let's just try something. If I go to set address here and I have param1, param2, and param3. Again, nothing happens. Now, if I do a var dump or a print r, they're both very, they're both kind of synonymous in this case. So I'm going to use print r just to switch things up a bit. And I pass in args. What this will do is this will print anything related to the args variable that has just been called. So if I refresh this, you'll see that it's creating an array where the first the first index, 0, is param1, the second index, 1, is param2, and the third index, 2, is param3. So, so far, so good. Now, we know that setters generally only have one argument. And if there's the case where we want to have a special setter, then we can, of course, define it as the primary setter for this class. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So we can have a very simple bit of logic here where we can say if count args is equal to one then this name actually we don't want the name we want the method property equals whoops args zero in other words we want to set the first parameter to the method property. Else, we want to throw a new exception saying default setter supports one argument. So now this is going to fail and it's going to say default setter supports one argument. Now what's neat about this is that we can actually create overrides. So Let's say I create a public function here called set address with, uh, let's say, street, postal code, and state. And then we say we echo uh, got three parameters. If I refresh this, you can see that got three parameters gets echoed. And that's because we have defined 
a function called set address. So this will always run before anything that has underscore underscore call. And this is a great way of creating overrides. So this is kind of our base functionality. And then we can extend our class with overrides, basically methods that override the trivial functionality or the generic functionality that we've implemented uh, in the call function. So if I delete that and I go back to index and instead of just putting param1, param2, param3, I just set the param set address with Eiffel Tower and I echo it, I'll get Eiffel Tower. And I can do user set first name John, user set last name, Levensold, that's my last name. All of that should work. And now I'm going to do something that would be a business rule. So in this case, instead of, you know, just showing, saying echo user get address, let's say I just want to echo the user. Now normally this doesn't work. Object could not be converted to string. However, we can take advantage of PHP's type system and implement a special method called toString. I'm going to create a public function called toString and it's going to echo first name lives first name space last name lives at address. <clears throat> 